I love it. Well, hi, hi, Breed and Ross. Welcome to the STR Data Lab. As you know, I'm Mariah Kame, VP of Marketing over here. Um, and I am so, so excited to talk to you today. What we're doing as part of our series is to get with movers and shakers in the business that are doing sort of innovative things. And of course, you naturally came up, Mr. Airbnb. So yeah. let's just start from the beginning, man. Let's talk about what was happening in 2017 for you. What in your mind possessed you to get into this business, Braden? What was it? Did you wake up one morning and you were like, I should do this. I should be an Airbnb host. <laughs> actually, actually, no, that's not how it started. Um, but I, number one, I appreciate you guys having me on. Uh, for anybody that's going to listen to this, like AirDNA is incredible. Been using, you know, the software for many years, and uh, not only using it, but I've told many people about it, and they're now using it. So if you haven't checked it out, check it out. Um, but yes, I did start this in 2017, and um, this is not what I thought I'd be doing. Uh, you know, I went to university like many people. I ended up leaving university after going to two universities and one college. Um, I realized it wasn't for me. I just didn't want to keep listening to somebody that I didn't really want to trade places with. I was like, why am I taking your advice if I don't want to be in the same position? Right. And I thought, okay, how can I get more into business? And I remember being a kid and just always finding a way to make a buck, two bucks, three bucks, four bucks, five bucks, whatever I could to go to the store, buy candy or whatever I could do. So rewind to 2017. Um, I remember I always wanted to just live in downtown, wherever the city it is that I was living in. I wanted my own car. I want to live downtown. I didn't care how big the spot was. <laughs> um, and I was able to achieve that. I start. I started doing, you know, uh, la landscaping. Uh, I used to be a hockey player, so I would teach people how to skate. I would do anything to make money. And I ended up saving up enough money to buy my first one bedroom, one bath condo in the hometown that I'm born in called Calgary. So what happened was it was Stampede, which is one of the biggest outdoor rodeos on earth. And it's a big event. I listed it on Airbnb um, because I wanted to make money online. My friend wanted to go on vacation and I was pretty much booked right away. I ended up, I don't remember the exact numbers, but I think it was like three, four grand I made in 10 wow. days. So it paid my, paid uh, either, I can't remember my full vacation. This is five years ago. Uh, or if it ended up just basically paying a portion of it. But all I knew is I was able to make an extraordinary amount of money versus what a tenant could pay me if I rented it out. I love that. So I was psyched and I was hooked, but I realized like the hurdle was I couldn't keep buying more properties and I had to get creative. Uh -huh. So we'll get into that. Shortly. Yes, yes, I know. Well, I, I, I have teased people about how you had sort of a different strategy, right? So there is sort of the buy your own place, make your own money, make your own investment. Um, but yeah, talk to yeah. me a little bit about, so you said, okay, I've got, I've got enough capital to buy my first place. It's making some money for me. Um, shout out to all the Canadian things you just said, by the way, like Stampede, <laughs> Calgary. Um, I think you even dropped hockey in there. So I love it. I love it. Uh, Maybe I said, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, all, the, all my American friends tease me. They're going to say, hey. <laughs> No, I'm not. I don't even know how Canadian I do sound. Some American friends are like, you don't even sound Canadian, but I don't know. No, you, you sound just the right amount of a Canadian. And trust me, I would any day of the week rather sound like a Canadian, right? I mean, they're just the nicest people. They're the nicest. I don't know. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Later. <laughs> well, yeah. So, okay. So what was the light bulb moment? You're immediately hooked and then you're like, okay, I could yep. get another property, but I don't have another 10, 20 grand sitting around to invest. Not at all. Yeah. Yeah, definitely not. I mean, after most people, when you invest up to save your first property, you're usually like, not usually, but most people are just trying to afford to get a down payment. Yes. And then I remember buying that property and being like, oh my God, I can't even afford to like buy proper furniture. Like I have to save up and make money for this. Right. So I was like, how can I make money online? So I listed it, Airbnb, it was amazing, but I was like, okay, after coming back from vacation, I got to get creative. I don't know if it was in the shower or what it was, but the light bulb went off because I'm always trying to think of if I could do this, well, maybe other people could do it too, but I got to try it to make sure it works. So I was like, what if I called homeowners and I just looked for places that were like across the road and I was like, hey, I'm an Airbnb host myself, but I would like to rent your property uh, and put it on Airbnb, but I actually wouldn't tell them that over the phone. I would be like, hey, I would love to meet 
for coffee or, and I didn't drink coffee at the time. Didn't my whole life actually, I just kind of started. <laughs> uh -oh, um, watch out, watch out. I was, <laughs> oh, I know. That's why I'm hyper right now. Uh, so the, the, what happened was I called them, met with them. And actually pretty much one of the first people that I met with, I said, Hey, here's my Airbnb account. I was a super host. This is how much I made. I can't remember if it was between 40 and 50, somewhere between actually 45, 55,000. I was cleaning my own property for the first year so I could make as much as possible. But a tenant would have only paid me probably 1500 a month. So that'd been 18 grand a year right. versus me making 45, 55. I pretty much made three X. So I was like, this is what I can do, but I didn't show my earnings. I just said, Hey, I got, I'm a super host. I have great reviews. I take care of my property. I own one. So I know what it's like to be a homeowner. Now she was like, okay, I don't mind doing this, but I want a premium on the rent. I said, perfect. I don't care about paying that premium because I know I can hit the numbers. Gotcha. And I didn't know that, but I was pretty certain. And what I used was AirDNA at the time. So I was looking at comparables and I would look at what I made and she's like, I trust you. This is my first mistake. So anybody listening, I realized that, well, I, I didn't realize it until I actually got a fine, <laughs> but uh, in my second unit that I ever got, I master leased that rental arbitrage. So that's when you go to a homeowner, you sign a lease agreement. Uh, you got to ensure that there's like an addendum or something on that agreement. You sign typically under your company um, and you rent that property from the homeowner. So that's first month's rent security. And then you pay for furnishing, staging, et cetera. So you're all in now. Right. So I set it up. I end up making, I don't know if it was 1500, two grand or 2,500 or even a thousand. I can't remember. It was a long time ago, but I was making a profit. But three months in, four months in, I get a call from the homeowner. Hey, they're fining you $200, something like that per stay because you're not allowed to do short-term rentals 30 days or less in the building uh -huh. without, actually, it's just not even without it, which just wasn't allowed. Even though she gave me permission, I didn't realize that I signed off on the bylaws within the lease uh, saying, hey, I've read these, even though I didn't, I was just excited. <laughs> And I got fined, lost that deal, uh, basically lost my security deposit oh, no. and um, I learned the hard way. So yeah, I started just calling homeowners and uh, that was my first lesson. I love that. Well, yeah, you're right. And sort of like, you know, 2017 to me, I'm old, so it doesn't seem that long ago, but it was, you know, it was a good amount of time ago, five years ago. And, and I imagine sort of the arbitrage space has changed so much since then right so like you know all of these learnings like and sort of balancing that's you know being a good neighbor and working with governments yeah. and uh, groups like that so what did you how are you operating today are you still doing any of this sort of arbitrage yeah i, w I wish i could just i wish i knew how to tell you my one minute synopsis of the last no 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 we can go deep in pandemonium, go deep in pandemonium. <laughs> yeah it's been pandemonium i'm not gonna lie like in any business, because what people don't understand is business is just, it's just not easy. Like it's not, and they think it's just going to be this straight line and it's never, it never is. It doesn't matter what business you're in, you know, it's not an overnight lottery. And, um, I realized that, okay, I could buy properties, I could rent properties, but what's another way where I could almost basically target anyone and show them how to do this. And if they had little to no money, they could get creative and start this business. And that was co-hosting. So co-hosting is the other method of leveraging other people's properties. And that's where you just offer your services to hosts that want to list or and or listed their properties. And you take like, let's say 15 to 30% in that range for doing a certain amount of services. It could be delegating cleaners, guest communication, pricing dynamics, uh, guest disputes, like any of those things, right? One thing people get confused on is, is depending on your local state laws, jurisdictions, like my lawyers advise me, like, you don't want to, you don't want to say you're a property management company because a lot of time you need a license to do yeah, that. Yeah. So you should technically have the homeowner getting paid first from the Airbnb account. They should pay the cleaners and then you should invoice them at the end of the month. And people, some people are doing it backwards and they're not licensed and that can actually get you in trouble. So beware for home or anybody listening, you want to get in this, do this the right way uh, instead of having to figure that out later with a big fine. Exactly. I love that. Yeah. And that's so, why we wanted you on the show, right? Because you are going to, you are seasoned enough to tell us sort of what not to do and what to do. And I'm a new, as you know, yeah. I'm new to this business myself. I've really only been in it for the last year. So yes, I was going to ask you like, all right, explain the nuance for myself and the audience on co-hosting. Sure. I love that. Yeah. So, 
So, so yeah, co-hosting, what I love about co-hosting and I literally just put up an Instagram story post today is how to make a hundred grand hypothetically in a year. This is what it would look like. I said, reach out to a hundred landlords. How do you do that? There's tons of rental sites. One of them is hotpads.com in the U S you can go to a filter that goes for rent by owner. Click that. You can directly get to the decision maker. So again, you go to that website, use this filter, call the homeowner, say, Hey, I would like to, uh, I actually ran numbers, sorry, on your property, use air DNA and say, hey, uh, have you ever thought about doing Airbnb yourself? The second you do that, they're actually going to listen to you because they think they're not being pitched. And realistically, you're offering value first, right? So have you ever thought about doing Airbnb yourself? I just pulled your numbers. You're wanting to rent it for two grand a month. That's 24 a year. I think you could do 50 to 60. What if you could do double that? Would you be interested? Oh yeah, of course I'd be interested. Well, would you be open to meeting for coffee? I'd like to help you for 30 days for free. I'm not going to charge you anything after that. If it works and I hit my target numbers and you're satisfied, I'll take, let's say 20% on a two year or 25% on a one year agreement. I don't make money until you do. Are you open to that? You just land, you could potentially land a deal with no money invested other than having a business and you've called a landlord and you spent $0 on marketing and, uh, Let's say you do that a hundred times and you land 20 deals on a 30 day trial and half of those convert. You got 10 deals and each of those made 40 K in a year. You have 400 K in revenue brought in at 20%. You've now made, uh, what is that? $80,000 in a year minus any fees expenses. And I know I said this really quickly for people that are like, I don't know what you just said. Makes no sense. <laughs> what you're doing is you're, you're, you're offering, you're, you're offering services to, uh, people that are unaware that they can make money and do this like in a way where they could potentially make more money and have a more flexible schedule. So if their family wants to come visit, they don't have a tenant in there. So you just got to make sure that the the area, the city allows you, you got to get the right licenses. You want to work with landlords that know what's going on. If you're going to rent the property, they have to be in the know uh, in writing, not just verbally. Right. And then also just checking with the building. Like I had to learn the hard way. So, uh, you know, for anybody that's like, What's AirDNA? Maybe they just found you. Like you're gonna use AirDNA mostly uh, to go and actually analyze that data, so you could punch in using their rentalizer without even paying anything to test it out to see what, on average, what that property could earn. So, anyways, that's a lot of information in a short form. I want people listening to be like, "Holy cow! I could take this info and go out and." actually build a business on a shoestring budget. I love that. Yeah, that's exactly. That's what this is. This is all about is like sharing these stories of innovation and entrepreneurship. And I can definitely see, like, like you said, back from when you were a young kid looking for that way to make the money, um, you have a lot to offer our audience. So thank you for sharing those stories. And it is, it is amazing yeah. how many times we do hear people say, you know, like just being able to show the potential, right. To use the data, to paint a picture of what's possible um, how that impacts yeah. their ability to, you know, operate their business. Right. Absolutely. So, so solutions like Rentalizer, um, glad to see, thank you for being a lot, a long-term customer for us, Braden. Love that. I have been, <laughs> and, and I'm not just saying that, like I actually genuinely have been, and I, I see, you know, just how many people have started to talk about air DNA and it's almost become a household name in STR data and real estate investment research. You know, it's like, I think that you guys have, you know, you've really proven as a company um, that people can trust you and they're willing, like, you know, some people may say, Oh my God, a hundred dollars or $200 or $50 to unlock a city's data is a lot, but it's really not when you're investing in your business because those data insights gives you a God's eye view, you know? Yeah. It's just worth it. Yeah. And it certainly, certainly feels like a big responsibility for us, but you know, the intention always is for folks to take the guesswork out, right? Like it's not a finger in the wind. It's totally. the ability to use actual data to get there. So I love that. Thank you. You're doing a better job of plugging the product. I don't know, Braden. If you want, you want to come work on my team. I mean, hey, you've got a place over here too if you want. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just. Uh, yeah. No, it just helped me a lot, and uh, I wish. You know, I wish I was better at understanding the data when I started. But this is why I had to make the mistakes, so your listeners don't have to make as many mistakes. And I've taught hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. I've reached hundreds of thousands and millions of people around the world with my message. And the cool part is hearing like some testimonials that I've had and being like, you know, I have a, I have a guy and I'm going to name drop his name's Alan. Uh, he was one of my students from three years ago. They had to go through the pandemic and build this business. Wow. Well, holy cow. So many businesses in this space went out of business because they were locked into leases they couldn't afford or just expenses they couldn't afford anymore. Right. They were able to, they've scaled up to 70 properties 
he told me he landed his deal on his 21st. Uh, he got 20 no's and then reached out to a realtor. A realtor introduced, I believe, him to his first client, which he then rented that property, signed a lease, and then did arbitrage. And they're down in Puerto Rico. Uh, Alan consistently updates me. I just did an interview with them. And they are currently at, when I interviewed them, they had 49 properties, 21 going live. This was three months, two, three months ago. And they had two point. Uh, $2 million in bookings at a roughly a 20% margin. And they said they will hit about three, 4 million on pace. They said over the next year to two years to do 10 million a year in bookings, wow. eight figures a year at 20%, right? So if they made a million to 2 million a year in just under five years of creating a business that started with just one month's rent and a security deposit and some furnishing. It's crazy. Oh my gosh. I love that story. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things that I really admire about this business is just you know, it, it has a low barrier to entry, right? So there's this opportunity yeah. for folks um, if they do it right. And like you said, it's not like the roads are paved in gold and it's just like easy peasy. No. You've had a lot of trials and tribulations, um, some of which yeah. we're highlighting, but, you know, of course we're doing it in a short amount of time. So, you know, of course it's not as easy as just setting and forgetting. Um, but, you know, again, lots of opportunity for folks here. Well, Brayden, obviously, you know, you've been sort of, you know, innovating in this space in a lot of ways. Um, so what what are you up to now? Like, where are you operating? Are you are you still based in Calgary or have you branched out? Yeah, and um, I'm originally, yeah, they started with in, in Calgary, originally started doing this business there. Like this was not, this was not supposed to be, in my opinion, this wasn't what I thought I'd be doing. Just like most things that happen, it falls in your lap right. and it ends up becoming great. Like the t when I started teaching, I don't like to just be like, oh, I know how to do something without doing it. I rather do it than teach the model and stay consistent in the business. And so when COVID hit, I didn't know really what angle to take myself. So I was like, oh, the world's shutting down. There's so many policies. People can't travel. Right. Um, and it just was like, okay, what do we do now? Nobody wants to really learn how to do Airbnb or short-term rentals uh, in a pandemic. So I had to sit back and like most of us was kind of like twiddling my thumbs for a while going, do I have to like completely pivot and change lanes? I took a step back and really ended up uh, as, of, as of late focusing on my health because I feel like if I could get my health at a, like as close to you know, there's no perfect, but as good as I could being an athlete in my younger years, as we get older, it's, you have to really be on top of it. Um, then I could really perform and really find new ways. And so ever since being a little kid, I was like, I want to innovate and find new challenges that other people haven't figured out yet. And what that was is, okay, there's a pandemic. How do we pivot and stay under this umbrella? And I thought, okay, there's going to be tons of hotels and tons of resorts that don't have bookings, right? They have Expedia and booking.com and all these other platforms, um, you know, that are able to get them bookings. Right. But what if, you know, you could put them on Airbnb and I believe it was 2018 Airbnb started introducing a connection um, with, I can't remember the uh, website, uh, site, not site minder. I can't remember. Um, but anyways, they introduced this connection and it allowed boutique hotels that they would select uh, or they'd go through a qualification to be put on there. Right. So any days that they weren't booked from Expedia, et cetera, they could show available on the Airbnb calendar. So now you could actually get bookings through Airbnb. And if you wanted to not add a cleaning fee, you didn't have to, because now there's in-house, uh, the, the housekeeping in-house and you have that concierge service. So integrate those two synergy or create a synergy between the two, uh, methods of hotels and short stays in people's homes. And you have this kind of perfect, unperfect, imperfect formula. So that's what we did. And wow. we ended up training uh, a guy who could speak uh, Spanish, a couple other people. And, uh, and it ended up turning into, well, I, I could share a little bit more info. Now we, we ended up uh, landing some uh, larger clients in the, uh, in, in the Mexican region, Mexico region, and between Puerto Vallarta, Cancun, um, uh, St. Bart's, uh, where else? Cabo. We landed some five-star luxury resorts and collectively they were able to give us a couple thousand units. Um, and what we do is we market those days and it's taken us years just to get the contracts in place because there's so much hierarchy there when you're dealing yeah. with these huge companies and then also marketing the days are not booked. So what we do is we'll market, we'll market those days and then we'll take a percentage on the middle. So it could be, let's say 10 to 20%, even 5%. Imagine just 5% on a thousand nights right. book at $200 right. a night, right? 
and you're not having to you're not even having to go and furnish the place, clean it. It's always going to be zoned. There's never going to be a change in those regulations because it's a hotel. That's a good point. Good point. Uh, right. So there, there's another way to do this. I don't recommend starting there. I recommend you go and you start right. by doing the arbitrage, the co-hosting, because you're not going to convince a hotel that you can do this if you have no results prior. It just doesn't make sense. No. If you do, great. You're a good salesman, but you need to know what you're doing. Um, so anyways, that's been that's been the years and years, but I've taught... Tons of people around the world from the from the UK to Australia to uh, Canada, the United States, and just pretty much everywhere. Not everywhere, but a lot of places. And people are like, well, what if what if it doesn't – I can't do this in my own city or in my own backyard. Yeah. Most of our units, we aren't even physically there. I'm actually currently setting up units in Austin, Texas. I was just down there. We were filming for a, a TV show. And we were talking about short-term rentals. And the guy who was hosting me says, hey, I – I, I, I know a couple people that might be interested in doing this and they're doctors, right? So they have all this extra cash flow and investment properties. Okay, well, how do you set up an Airbnb when you're not there? You find people yep. uh, that can help you with the furnishing, the staging, and you can do the pricing dynamics, marketing, the photographer goes in, it's, it's doable. So anyways, I know I'm no, rambling a lot it. here, but I want people to understand they don't have to physically be there in their own backyard. And there's lots of opportunities. I think that's so great. I know. And I'm going to circle back, like even to the beginning of, of the not ramble, yeah. the good advice you were giving people. Um, and it's just also, yeah. it's just so wonderful to hear your success story. Right. And, and of course, um, sort of get in deep on how you got there. But I, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I would say like one of the pieces of advice that Scott Shatford, our founder, has always given people it's like, don't don't go and invest in the place like that you want a vacation in, right? Like, I mean, it works for some people where they, you know, invest in a property, they buy it and they use it half of the year, and then the other half, you know, they're they're renting it out. But he's like, no, go where it makes sense, right? Like, look at the markets and see where demand and travel is going, see where you think, you know, you could have a competitive advantage. And so yeah, I love that. And I love the I love even just the concept rating of like focusing on health, right? Like I think that's something that a lot yeah, of folks yeah. in the hospitality industry um forget because we're caregivers, right? Um and I'm I'm using the we yeah. maybe I mean I'm not a, in the hospitality, I'll be I'll be honest, but like for folks like you, yeah. I mean, you know, when you started, right? Cleaning your own toilets and things like that. Um so it's very easy for hospitality folks yeah. I think to forget to take care of themselves. So I love that that PSA is a very good one. Um 100%. And then, yeah, I'm just really struck with like sort of that innovation and that sort of blending of worlds um, between hotels and STRs and right, like, and, and truly how um, the hotels are starting to sort of get wise is that Airbnb is just another OTA, right? It's a distribution channel for them. It's another way to get eyeballs. Yeah. Um, side note, I'm, I think I might be going to Cabo or Cancun. So I don't, maybe we should talk more. <laughs> maybe we should talk more. I need to, I need to plan my spring break. Well, there we go. I mean, we we have clients also in Tulum and those places. And it's not just hotels. Like there's, we, you know, we actually just recently, uh, again, a lot of this as you grow comes through like referrals yeah, too. Like you can have paid and organic marketing cool, but like referrals are much easier to close because the person referring, they're already going to put in a good word. So the person's just trusts you more so, oh, right? Boy. So they have to know, like, and trust you. Um, so we have like a couple of penthouses in Tulum and they're gorgeous, right? You can invest down there, for example. I'm not saying this is not financial right, advice, right. but you can go pick up like a, a condo for 100, 200,000 US up in Canada in some places. And even for example, Toronto, it might cost you a million dollars and you can almost earn, let's say, based on what AirDNA could tell you, roughly almost as much as something that costs you a million for one fifth the price. So it's like, be smart about your investment. Just like Scott says, where it makes sense, go to that, that if the numbers aren't going to lie, people lie, but numbers just don't, you know? Ooh, so, I love that. Again, I, if you want to come work for me, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to share whatever I can do. This is just coming from like literally experience and years and years. Like, you know, I, I couldn't have told you this at year one, year two, like it had to come from years of just grinding and grinding. Yeah. So just like anybody yeah. that's in any business. A hundred percent. Yeah. And I think that's great that now, People can take advantage um, of your your knowledge, and you you know again they don't have to learn the hard way. You've already done that for yeah. them. They can take advantage of your wisdom yeah. um, as they get their start. So so tell me what is it? What's your favorite part about teaching? Like sort of how have you gravitated towards that work as well? Yeah, and and it's funny. I actually stopped, almost completely stopped teaching when pandemic hit. 
Um, and, and I realized that like, how am I going to teach something people don't necessarily want to get into? So I had to figure it out and pivot myself. Right. And, um, you know, I, I built a course and all those things. And just as the pandemic hit, I'm like, nobody's going to want to do this. So I need to figure it out. And that's really when we started to adapt more so into getting into the hotel and the resort side, but teaching has been wonderful. The law of averages, you know, not everyone will be successful because not everyone will put in the effort. Um, you can give people as much information as they need, just like AirDNA. You can give all the data, but it doesn't mean somebody's going to pull the trigger and make it no, happen. No. Um, and, you, and, and it is what it is. But for anybody listening that actually wants to make it happen, it's, it's just consistency over time and tar having a target. If you consistently go towards a target and you're one step closer every time you put an effort towards it, you're going to hit something eventually, likely. So, um, yeah, it's taken people years to kind of get those results. And I'm hearing it now. I got 50 properties, 80 properties, 100 properties, and it's multi million dollar businesses. And I go, hey, do you want to exit? Are you interested in selling this company? Because that's a whole other topic. I spoke with a lady. She sold her, she sold her company, right? So I think it was a, I can't give exact numbers, but uh, they were doing a couple million a year or something like that. And um, a company came and acquired them. And there's big players in this space. And there's the possibility to actually build value within these contracts. Let's say you have a hundred clients on a two year agreement that are on auto renewal and you can see the future pacing roughly of what the median would be on those contracts. Cause you've already proven it from the past two year track record. Right. Well, now the homeowners a are making more money. You're making money. And let's say you wanted to increase the value on that property. Somebody as an Airbnb or a real estate investor might come in and go, Hey, I'd like to either a buy that property from the homeowner for an increased value and you can take it over. So however you want to delegate that, I don't know if your license is a real estate agent, but sell it for an increased premium. That's something new. I'm like, this is super interesting. People are starting to realize, right. or you just sell the whole company and be like, oh, I just, let's say you exit for a couple million bucks, right? Now you're like, okay, now I got a couple million bucks. Maybe you go buy your own pieces of real estate. You're building that equity. And I recommend you have slow, medium and fast paced or sorry, slow. Yeah, no, sorry. Short, medium and long term. <laughs> short would be your like, your income, if you could get daily income, right. then you have your medium, which might be like monthly or every couple months you've invested in something. And then your long term, where you're investing in, let's say, properties from the short term income and leveraging short term income to buy your own properties and build equity. Because if you could buy, let's say you buy a property every year for like five years, you're going to be a multimillionaire over time. You just will because property always appreciates over time and doing it quicker through Airbnb, if that's possible, using AirDNA. <laughs> It would be, you know, perfect for anybody listening. This is like a, an actual way to become a multimillionaire, you know? I love that. Well, I can see why you were so good at teaching and you have a lot of great advice to give folks. Um, and I think you you hit the nail on the head, right? Like it's it's a consistency over time and like making the incremental, yeah. incremental moves. Um, it is. Brayden, it's been such a pleasure to talk to you and you have given our listeners such great advice. Um, really interesting for them to hear more about your story. I want to do two things before I let you go. I stop torturing you. Um, one, <laughs> let's start with the good stuff. Where can people find you if they want more of the good Brayden, Brayden knowledge? Where do they go? Yeah. Um, I'm active most on Instagram. I should be active on more platforms, it's but that's, hard. that's my, that's the, so it is, it is pretty difficult. You really got to be consistent. Um, but yeah, Instagram, just that Mr. Airbnb, that's what I'm currently under. So no spaces, underscores, numbers, nothing. It's just M R A I R B N B. Um, and if you heard me from this podcast, just DM me air DNA and I'll sell you, I'll send you my affiliate link. <laughs> um, <laughs> But 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 DM DM me air DNA so I know you came from here and uh, yeah I'm I'm happy to to uh, respond to the people I can get back to I can't always get back to everybody but I try to do my best and um, yeah I just appreciate everyone's time your time for having me on here I know it's short and I just tried to give you five years of experience I, I like love it fifteen to thirty minutes but that's, yeah that's gonna be my new pitch for the cast it's gonna be five years and thirty minutes or you know ten years five and thirty years. minutes whatever you can squeeze in. Um, all right, yeah. Brayden, before you go, we like to end the podcast um, with a fun who, what, where game. All right. So yeah. besides yourself and AirDNA, who would you recommend a host listen to for advice? Uh, in the in the Airbnb space or business? Airbnb, uh, either. I'd say I'll give you either. Okay. <laughs> 
One of my favorite people to listen to is Alex Hermosi. He's starting to become super prominent on social media. If you haven't heard of him, they built him and his, uh, I think they're engaged now, or wife. Yeah, I think they are married. Him and Layla have built a $100 million business in two and a half, three wow. years. Um, and he just drops, He's his motto is, I have nothing to sell you. He tries to give you as much free advice as possible. I'm going to plug his thing. Uh, just, I think it's just Harmozi, H-O-R-M-O-Z-I-Z-I -I -I, on Instagram. And it's just short form content that just teaches you this guy's level of business knowledge. I use it, especially in sales when I'm negotiating with homeowners or whoever in life. And because he understands how to build a nine figure business, uh, you know, and hopefully I think he, you know, he's on track to do 10 figures uh, eventually and become a billionaire. I think they're giving away all their money too to charity when wow. they die. Um, cool. which is absolutely incredible. He's only 31, 32 years he's old. He's got a while. I think he's Layla's, got a while probably. He, just just crushing it. But the level of knowledge this guy has is unbelievable. So Harmozi on Instagram. I don't know if you'll ever see this, but if he does, cool. I've yeah, never we'll met him. him. But I watch him. We'll tag him in it. <laughs> <laughs> he puts out more content, you know, than than most people. So yeah, that would be my 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 business advice in uh for the person I I listen to consistently. I love that. All right, next one. What, and I know you covered a few of these, but what do you wish you knew before you started your short-term rental business? Um, what I wish I knew, it's I, I actually don't regret buying my first property um, because I had the ability to do so and I had control of actually being able to go ahead and earn all the money that was coming in. Um, and it gave me the ability to not have to be micromanaged from the homeowner wanting reports and all these things. Right. Um, but Something I wish I knew prior was uh, having a mentor, but there was really, I couldn't find a mentor back no, in 2017 right. in this space. There really wasn't much out there. Uh, now there is, um, but it would be, yeah, like I took massive risk and I don't regret it, but I also wish I was more calculated mm -hmm. by finding the people that had already been there and I didn't do a good enough job searching for those people, even if it was a digital relationship. So I would find a mentor. I love that. That's great advice um, for everyone in life. All right. So let's say yeah. you could have started in any market and you didn't, you had unlimited budget. You could have spent a million dollars on a down payment. Um, where would have you bought your first property? So it's, it's not, uh, it, it, actually it's, it's a really tough question because obviously there's so many great spots, you know, Hawaii being one of the huge markets right. that's it's expensive, but the ROI is there, but it's also very restrictive is what I've read. Yeah. Um, I have friends that, you know, or people that I've know that operate in that space, but it is restrictive. So what I would do is I would look for the, 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 the cheapest properties with the highest ROI. So I'm going to be looking down in uh, probably in like South America areas of the Caribbean, Caribbean, however, everybody says like both Canada, Canada, I call it Canada, Canadian versus uh, America. <laughs> <laughs> um, we say Z and Z differently as yep, well. Yep. So yeah. Um, Anyways, I, I would look in those areas. Just like I said, you could go pick up a property, let's say Playa del Carmen or Tulum. It could be $100,000, but if it can make you thirty a year, well, damn, you've pretty much just paid back that property if you put it all back in, into the property, assuming that's after tax, in like three and a half to five years, you know, with interest. So it's like you could go and take property one, pull equity out of it, go get property two. So I would look at those areas where it's the cheapest but I can get a similar ROI. It doesn't mean just because I live in Calgary, I have to buy a half a million or a million dollar home. That To me, that doesn't make as much sense unless the data is there that shows me. And I actually unlocked the, the stats for Calgary and I did find some huge properties that were doing multiple six figures a year on wow. Airbnb and they were multi-million dollar homes. But I would take that chunk of change because most people don't, well, everybody doesn't have unlimited money. But if you get creative and you have a group of friends, maybe you don't have the money, get the money together, go buy property one in a cheaper area. And, and there's going to be so many deals I feel that are going to come up because of the rising interest rates right now. People are going to have a massive opportunity to make a lot of money. People want to travel, but also there's going to be homeowners that can't afford their home anymore, unfortunately. So there's going to be opportunity for you to come in creatively if you have to and have the ability to make a ton of money and also, you know, help a lot of people travel, uh, through Airbnb and, and, and sites like that. So Airbnb is just my favorite. Um, cause it makes it easy. Um, I, you know, just the platform, the marketing, the insurance, all these things air covered, like it's just easy to use. So coupled with air DNA, it's kind of this perfect formula for you to come in and you have the opportunity and resources just listening to this to go and actually go start this business right now for free.
like not for free, but with the information was free. Yeah, at least we're giving the information away for free. You're right. For for lower barrier yeah, to yeah, entry. Yeah. I love this. Um, we've certain, certainly inspired me. Um, and I'm going to circle back with you on these whole, where am I going in Cancun, obviously. Um, Brayden, yeah. again, thank you so much for joining me. This is, you were our, my yeah. first guinea pig on this new format that we're doing. Um, you exceeded expectations, my friend. Thank you so much for offering such great advice to our listeners. Um, and they know where to find Appreciate you, Mr. It. Airbnb on Instagram. Um, and let's keep yeah. in touch. I want to see what's next for Braden Ross and next year. Yeah, I'm excited for everybody listening too. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. Appreciate right. you. Cheers.